first of all, thrown into the deep end, actually, <laughs> Tim asks, I don't know how to formulate this into a question, but I would like Kit to talk more about the fear aspect of tightness, particularly post-injury, and what advice he has. To give some context Look, um, so that he can reformulate this into something coherent, I'm currently working on opening up my hips for a sumo deadlift, but I feel like my adductors are maybe tight, such as a, from a fear response due to injuring my hips, having weaker glutes, mm -hmm. and it won't loosen mm -hmm. up until I get over that. Well, here's the thing. The human organism is, is a self-referencing organism, and so if you have a deep belief that this is going to happen to you or this is actually what's happening it's not just a question of whether or not an independent observer would see those causal mechanisms in action or not the fact is the way that you're thinking about the problem is literally predisposing the outcome of any activity that you take in respect to that problem and so it's, it's a self-referencing loop and the question then becomes God how can I step out of this loop that's it's extremely subtle because how can you, it, this, the real question is, how can I think outside the box? I have this, I have this feedback coming from my body which says, um, when I do get into this position, this hurts or this movement feels like it can't open up. I'm experiencing fear in my body and, and I'm thinking about what is underneath that and of course what's underneath that is I'm terrified about hurting myself. This is real. So uh, uh, that's, just, that's the mechanism of what's actually happening and of course it's... A, as I said, it's extremely hard to get past that. So here, in short, in brief, are the techniques that we have found to be extremely helpful. But firstly, it's necessary to understand that the protective mechanism first and the fear underneath that is hardwired in your body. It's called the fight or flight response. Now, a lot of people, and guys like Hans Selye, that Canadian doctor who wrote the, the most brilliant book on the subject called The Stress of Life, um, all pe all medicine has concentrated on is the actual corticosteroid response of the fight or flight mechanism. But no one has written about what else goes on at the same time. Any time the fight or flight mechanism is triggered, your body's tension increases. It is never the case that your human body or any body, any, any mammalian body, responds to any threat by relaxing, opening and lengthening. It's never happened on the planet. It is always Closing, guarding, protecting, and tightening down, protecting throat, gut, groin, the, the, the big three areas in the human body. So how do we get past this? Firstly, by recognizing that this is a natural response, that should decrease the fear dimension of it. Secondly, whenever you're in the face of that physical tension, you need to apply a stress of a calculated size. It must be enough to move the system to a new developmental trajectory but at the same time it can't be too much because the system will shut you down and so we are literally playing the razor's edge of too much and not enough and so what we do is we go into the position whatever it is that we're talking about let's, let's say in respect of a sumo deadlift we might be talking about the squash frog or the tailor pose some, some exercise that opens up the adductors but with the knees bent, so we're only talking about the, the ductus that, are, that occur between the pelvis and, the, and, and above the knee, um, and we get into a position where we experience the tension in those muscles, and then we do something which is definitely not hardwired in the system, but which is absolutely necessary. You take in a deep breath, and you literally let the body go soft. Now, we, we've just come out of a workshop in, in London, it was just, just so amusing, I'd walk up to this guy, let's say it's a guy, it could have been a girl, and say, are you? I would say, are you relaxed? And the guy, and the guy would say, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm completely relaxed. They're in this stretch, let's say they're in a lunge hamstring stretch or something. And I say, well, just a second. I reach down and I feel their tummy, and the tummy is completely rigid. They, and this is the key thing, Yusuf, those people believe that they're relaxed, and if you have not actually had the experience in your body of being deeply relaxed, <laughs> that will be your version of relaxed. But in fact, it's not real. And so when you do actually physically say, OK, I'm going to let my tummy go soft, which is a, a deliberate choice of taking tension away from an area, all of a sudden the tension in the muscle group that we're talking about, in this case the adductors, goes down. And it may not be a huge decrease in the beginning, but it goes down. 
Then you take in another breath. You put all of your awareness in the muscle group that you're trying to lengthen and you make sure that any lengthening or any stretching occurs during the period of the breath out. Now this might sound <clears throat> way too specific, but let me explain what I mean. If you try this both ways and you try lengthening a muscle while you're holding your breath or when you, st when you breathe out and the breath has stopped moving, if you try to lengthen during that period, you'll find the lengthening effect is reduced immensely. If, for example, you're doing a stretch and you find that you run out of time, as in you breathe out but you know you can still go further, stop moving when you breathe out, take in another breath, check to see that you haven't tightened up in the process, and then once again, as you start to breathe out, let your whole body go limp and try to <coughs> try to move a bit more deeply into the range of movement. If you can do that, you will always get more movement. I think this runs up against the typical way that people stretch, and it certainly changed the way that I stretch, which is mm. set a timer for 30 seconds, grit as hard as you can, <laughs> and just bloody just go for it until you can't handle it anymore. And yeah, very rarely do you gain any range of motion unless it's just by pure attrition. Um, yeah. And the other point that you <clears> mentioned as well about the relaxed abdomen, I think maybe 80% of the people listening, if they're sat in their car or <laughs> sat listening to this, probably realised that they were holding tension in their abdomen even when you think that you're relaxed. And it's yeah. crazy because we're not we're not under a physical threat, but we do just have these these resting tensions that we only realise when we when we tune in. So I suppose the three exactly. points there for and, and, Tim. And, go ahead. Go, well, I was just going to say... <clears throat> sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. I was just going to say... We do have a whole bunch of free relaxation audio recordings on our site. And people, are, you know, <coughs> we, we love you to use them. I'm going to just say this before you sum up the three points for Tim. Unless you have the direct experience in your body and your mind of what being deeply relaxed feels like, it's just like whistling at the moon. You can tell yourself to relax, you can tell yourself to let yourself go soft, you can do all these other things and it's a game you're playing with yourself. If you cannot recreate that sensation of being deeply relaxed in the moment, you haven't got it. And so w the reason we use the lying relaxation um, as the way into this is that for most Westerners in particular, and look, look, the whole of life is conspiring to take your attention from what's happening inside you. I mean, the iPhone generation, the fact that we're on the internet now, the fact that you're sitting in your car as a listener listening to a podcast, I mean, the whole thing is so completely unreal. But we, are li we live in a world where we are bombarded with competing stimulation and we have to make choices between these things, not realising that there's other choices that can be made too, like not tuning in. Anyway, given, given that we are, we are, at least we hope we are trying to use this, this medium as a means of helping people to... Um, I, I don't like the word cope with their life better. I'm actually... We really should be saying to help people feel more comfortable about living their life and being happier about living their life, then I think that's a legitimate use of the technology. But anyway, you were going to sum up the three things for Tim. Sure, so many ideas now, but yeah, so Tim, um, I, I guess there it's bring awareness to the area, apply a calculated stress to that area that's, that's only slightly beyond the current range, and then on the exhale, learn to, learn to breathe out into that and to, to lengthen on each exhale and if you find that you could go further take another breath hold steady and then go for a further breath while you're breathing out do the further movement but and the key thing the key the absolutely key thing which is actually a new part of our work it's only probably a year old now is every time before you're about to restretch something do check in to see whether your tummy is tight or not 99 times out of 100 it will be and by just letting it go soft which of course is the antithesis of the buff body, right? So there's this, this other thing happening in the mind here. Let yourself go, apart from whatever you're using to, as tension to hold yourself in the position that a stretch requires, all other tension, let it go completely. Let your tummy go soft. If you're working with someone, ask them to press your tummy gently. And you'll, you'll be thinking that you're relaxing, but as soon as you feel someone pressing on your tummy, you'll think, oh, actually, yeah, I can relax more. 
The, everything that you can do to relax more, including using the relaxation scripts at another time, will help this project. So I've actually used your relaxation scripts. Uh, you have one for back pain that I've been listening to every night. And uh, yeah, it is fantastic. And it is a skill that you, you get better at. And I think uh, initially it is frustrating when um, you expect it to be an easy task. But actually, because it's not something that we're used to cultivating, it, it does take some time. But I've been getting better over the months. Good. Well, look, let me just make a brief side comment on that. Our species, talking now about Homo sapiens, we are the result of thousands of generations of mammals who were immensely capable at mobilising the fight or flight response. And we are on the planet even now, we're the supreme killers. I mean, that's a terrible thing to say, but it's also real. It's true. Human beings are always at war with one another. The things that humans seem to be able to do the most effectively is kill other human beings, etc., etc. But here's the thing. That's a sympathetic nervous response, as you know from your study. And up until now, there has never been a powerful reason to develop the opposite response called the relaxation response, and that's mediated through the parasympathetic nervous system, as you know, which literally switches all of those switches in the other direction. It is not natural for human beings to be relaxed. I, I would agree with that completely. But I will also say that being able to relax when you want to is simply another skill which you can develop. We, we say if, if you want to be able to relax, you've got to commit yourself to practicing for a month. But then we say if you're really serious about making a change to yourself, you've got to practice for three months. If you do daily practice of those relaxation scripts for three months, you will literally be a different person at the end of that period.